Kind of difficult to know where to start with a race like the Turkish Grand Prix today. Wet, drying, but never dry enough to get onto slicks. Although the intermediates by the end were technically slicks, nothing left on them at all. I think the only way to start really is with the emotion of Lewis Hamilton clinching his seventh World Drivers' Championship. Uh, there was that moment when he, he drove up to Park Ferme and just sat in the car and you could see that he was crying. Tears of joy, emotion, obviously. Um, I wonder what was going through his head, really. <laughs> a million things. I can't imagine what that feels like. The enormity of winning seven championships, equaling Michael's record, um, and doing it in a way that will always be remembered. To win your seventh title in a race like that, when you were basically nowhere, and to drive through in difficult, changing, variable conditions, just just wonderful to see. I think longer term Lewis will probably look back at this year and think wow I won that title in a year in which obviously there were so many issues that that came to the front and obviously the social issues that Lewis has been very much a part of and should take full credit for. Uh, but I think also he'll remember it as a year in which he raced and won at four circuits that we'll probably never see on the calendar again. I hope we do, but we probably won't. And hadn't been on the calendar for, I don't know, 10 years or something. So I think that is a really nice touch to this 2020 title of Lewis's. He said afterwards that, you know, we had a terrible qualifying session, but we learned from that. And that's the great thing about the team. And I've been kind of thinking what he meant by that. He talked about communication. Obviously, there is that element of sometimes let me, the driver, decide what's best. And maybe we saw that at the end of the race when Lewis defied the instruction to come in for a safety set on the last lap because they thought there'd be a bit of rain at turn eight. And they knew, the Mercedes team that is, that Lewis had far, by far and away enough cushion to be able to do that. But then Lewis is thinking, wow, you know, 07, Shanghai, spun in the pit lane, don't risk it, don't touch it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And stayed out there knowing that he had the, the confidence and the ability to be able to deal with any rain that might come his way anyway. So I think that maybe was an example. I think the other more um, relevant point probably that points to the outcome of this race is the pattern, isn't it? The, the teams that went well yesterday in that got tire temperature working well and quickly or relatively well and relatively quickly didn't do very well in the race when the track started to dry out and vice versa of course so you saw teams like racing point struggling a little bit when the graining came on we'll get onto that in a minute but certainly uh, if you take mclaren as a good example look pretty good today both lando norris and carlos Sainz really strong races lando looked great in so many different situations with traffic but McLaren, no way yesterday. Admittedly, they had that weird decision to go into intermediates, but nonetheless, really quick today. Alfa Romeo, really good yesterday, not so good today. Renault, pretty good yesterday, getting temperature, not very good today. Daniel Ricciardo never really looked as if he was in it. Mercedes couldn't get the temperature to work yesterday, but right on it today. Uh, Ferrari, not very good yesterday, right on it today. So that points to possibly something as basic as setup. You know, I don't know whether we're talking tire pressures here, cambers. Um, Ackerman, all the things that you use to get temperature in tyres were the teams like Ferrari, the elder statesman teams like Ferrari and Mercedes thinking, no, we want the race set up because it may not be wet towards the end of the Grand Prix, who knows. Uh, but certainly there was that pattern. And then I think another evolved, and that was uh, in, once everybody switched to intermediates for the first time, it was kind of status quo and everything continued as normal but when the about half distance when the track really started to dry and the graining really became an issue on the intermediate then some drivers got through that pretty well and got to the point where they could use the tires as slicks and others didn't and that was i think a defining moment as well but let's not get ahead of ourselves let's just talk about some of the things that happened right at the start lunch stroll 
parlaying that pole position into an amazing lead, a lead that a Jackie Stewart or a Jim Clark or a Lewis Hamilton would be delighted with four or five seconds after two laps. Just beautiful. Out there on the track, no spray in front of him, doing a perfect job. Meanwhile, Max Verstappen had a sort of Magello stutter off the line, couldn't get any revs, was swamped by half the field. And then, of course, there was lots of uh, shenanigans at the first corner anyway. And, and one of those involved was Valtteri Bottas. So that was the end of Valtteri's day. He had a dreadful day, dreadful race, dreadful weekend, really. So <laughs> Valtteri would be very happy to be flying out of Turkey, I am sure. What that meant, of course, was that the two racing points then had a very clear one, two, and they looked fabulous on the circuit. There was nothing to touch them. They were pulling away with ease. And in P3, an absolutely brilliant Sebastian Vettel making a great start, doing a lot of really good avoidance at the first corner when all that stuff was going on, finding himself up in P3, right up there with Alex Albon and um, doing a great job, just really driving well. And that became one of the features, the early features of the race. Sebastian didn't have quite the pace, you could say, of a Red Bull, certainly of a Lewis Hamilton in a Mercedes, but he was doing a really good job just holding, holding them up. I say holding them up, and that's not strictly true. There was probably maybe two or three tents in it but at this point there was of course no DRS allowed in the race because the conditions were wet and for Sebastian it was a case of just getting on drive the car and I think benefiting from the things I've been talking about over the last two days that flush of confidence that he got on Friday when the track was greasy and he was throwing the car around not really worrying too much about lap time just enjoying himself getting on top of his car control and actually doing a slightly quicker lap time than Charles Leclerc and that would have given him a good overnight into Saturday and Saturday worked well too from Sebastian's point of view Ferrari way off the pace but as a racing driver he could suddenly look Charles in the eye and say wow you know I'm quicker than you so so that was what he took into the race on Sunday and that's what we saw with Sebastian's driving I think a new uh, absolutely new Sebastian relative to any sort of persona he's exhibited so far this year lots of confidence and there was no way in the world Lewis Hamilton was going to pass him that was that and so the race kind of went into that slightly um, twilight zony period of the racing points out here. Is this the way it's going to end? And the race started to change around half distance. The first thing that happened was that DRS came into play about lap 30, and that made it a very different sort of race, certainly from the strategist's point of view. And secondly, there was a decision to be made about whether to come in for a second set of intermediate tyres. For sure they would be quicker in that they would be new and therefore they would have a longer life. But then again, there was the other element of would they eventually turn into slicks and turn into the tyre that would be perfect for the late race conditions when it was dry online but kind of wet offline. That was the decision that had to be made. Ferrari made the choice to bring both drivers in and put them on new sets. And it worked pretty well, as we see. Sebastian Vettel was eventually third. Charles Leclerc was fourth, but he could have been third as well. So Ferrari right up there. From their point of view, they had a really good day and they made the right choice. So if you look at the race around lap 32, 33, all of a sudden, for the first time since qualifying, it's starting to look difficult for Racing Point because Lance Stroll is saying on the radio, I'm starting to lose the front. Why is the front going away? Sergio Perez has done a really good job. He's about three seconds behind him. He's got Lewis in his mirrors. But we all know that Sergio Perez is an impenetrable barrier in terms of defense. He's as good in defense, probably better in defense, than he is in attack. So Sergio is there doing a great protective job for Lance Stroll and the team. But he's also saying that the tires are feeling pretty good. So there's this dilemma for Racing Point. Should we do anything with Lance's tyres? We've got Sergio out there. We're sort of covering that base. Let's bring Lance in. We'll call it a belt and braces because he's leading the race. He's going to be on a new set of tyres. He comes in and the race falls away completely from Lance Stroll. As the track is now drying, he goes out on the new set of intermediates and all of a sudden graining becomes an issue. That's the little rubber balls between the treads of the tyre on the intermediate. Valtteri Bottas and I think Daniel Ricciardo had exactly the same problem. And when these rubber balls occur, it is almost impossible to do anything about it. Yes, you can drive through it. Yes, you can have some drivers who perhaps are more persistent, more able to do something about graining than others. But generally speaking, graining is such a problem. You know, it doesn't really matter whether you're a Lance Stroll or Lewis Hamilton. It is a really big issue. And that's what Lance 
then faced. He got instant graining and just sank like a stone. It was only late in the race through wear that eventually his tyres got down almost as slicks as well, but he was kind of doing the same lap times as everybody else. And, and the interesting thing, of course, is that Lance was saying, why, why, when they said, we're going to bring you in, and we didn't hear any response at that point. So I can imagine that he's not a very happy lad right now. Racing points decision with Lance has to be seen in the context of maybe, I don't know, the last race when they put Sergio on the soft tyres at the restart and lost positions as a result. You know, these things happen and strategists are there to try to prevent them happening. But anyway, that was Lance Stroll kind of out of the Turkish Grand Prix. And this was Lewis Hamilton now leading because Sebastian Vettel has also gone in for that stop for the second set of intermediates. And Sergio Perez, of course, was an easy target for Lewis Hamilton once the track had a dry groove and the Mercedes could start being what it is, the best racing car in Formula One on intermediate tyres that were rapidly now becoming slicks. All the performance factors that are normal around a Lewis Hamilton Mercedes package then became evident. And it wasn't difficult for him with DRS to pass Sergio Perez and therefore effectively take the lead and to win the Turkish Grand Prix. Of course, there's a lot of other mitigating circumstances. When he was behind Sebastian, when he was in the wet, Lewis too had several moments. Of course, that is the overall structure of the race, but there were so many incidents. I mean, two of them involved Max Verstappen. In both, in one of them, a 360, a very quick 360, when he took his eye off the ball, when an alpha spun that he was just about to pass, just about to lap, and he spun as well. He did a 360 and continued, lost maybe one or two seconds. But the big moment for Max, when he was doing his great recovery race from that terrible start, was when he was right behind Sebastian Vettel, going through the ultra quick kink. You're talking seventh gear here, just before they've got eighth gear, he's right behind him, there's no DRS so it's very important he's as close as possible and then pulls out and tries to get him under braking and he lost it <laughs> he lost it on the kink incredible moment and yet Max Verstappen was still there at the end of the race some absolutely fabulous race driving from him on the last lap Charles Leclerc had actually caught Sebastian Vettel and got ahead of him Sebastian's tires had gone off slightly quicker than Charles and they were both catching Sergio Perez really quickly and on the last lap Charles Leclerc got round Perez and had the lead of the trio group going into the at the end of the straight but then he locked his right front obviously the tires were right on the edge of wear and grip at that point locked the right front ran wide and Sergio retook second place and Sebastian Vettel P3 I think from Sebastian's point of view that was a just reward for a very good weekend when he's looked on top of it all weekend I can't imagine Charles was very happy but I think overall he'll think that was a great motor race and from where I was on the grid you know for Ferrari to finish third and fourth was not a bad result at all. A good day for McLaren, as I say, and a shout out too for Kevin Magnussen, who early on was running P7 in the Haas. Roman Grosjean was showing how bad that car can be in every condition, whether it be intermediates, whether it be wets. And yet that was Kevin doing a really good job, a really good racing driver's job of having the car up in the top 10. So it was a shame when he had to stop just at the end of the pit lane, when he could have been a top 10 finisher. Great shame for him. I had a bit of a, um, had a, bit of a WhatsApp interchange last night with one of the Racing Point engineers and I was wishing them luck. And he was saying, yeah, the big, big, big issue tomorrow is going to be Lewis. And I said, really, I think it's probably going to be Max, isn't it? I mean, Max is going to be good. Lewis will probably be driving around playing safe. <laughs> How wrong I was. Lewis Hamilton, play safe. He's a racing driver. That's why he's won seven world championships.